in our culture now is that we're sort of all encouraged to be super thrusting and amazingly certain and know exactly who we are. And it's like we feel that we failed if that isn't happening. I think if we're to believe in and, and cherish the kind of idea of, of a law-based society, we have to be prepared to show passion and determination in putting those views into action. Trinity, I think this time last year, if you're right, and I think you are talking to Ruth Barton and did this public interview, which was lovely, because I'm also sort of loosely uh, attached to the um, film studies department. I come and do talks every so often. So that was that, and it was lovely. And then I went off and I did Normal People, and perfectly, perfect timing, uh, the Law Society asked very kindly would I come and accept this award, which I was proud to do. Yeah, really nice, because I was a Trinity student, um, and, feel it, and lived here for a couple of years, more than a couple of years in rooms, and was lectured in this lecture theatre, and so I feel like a very strong affinity to the college, and I've actually spent quite a bit of time this year, or last year, filming here, because part of normal people takes place in Trinity, so um, yeah, it's just a nice little circle, having been here last year, and through the year, and then again this year. And I suppose as well as normal people, um, a lot of your other uh, projects have been based in Ireland, or been based on work, work based on Irish authors, um, like what Richard did and so on, so is that a conscious decision to do Irish work? I mean, at the beginning, it's, it's what's around, and what's around you, and Adam and Paul came from this <coughs> chance meeting through another producer, um, with Mark Halloran and, and that just that was just a wonderful lucky thing and you know it was my city and, and it felt like I understood it. Is there something about the books that, that draws you to them and makes you want to make films about them? Well it's a it's a tricky one because after after Room I didn't want to do another book, right? And I've ended up doing two. <laughs> uh, I don't like the fact that the industry relies so heavily on pre-existing material, or IP as they like to call it, um, intellectual property. How important do you think diversity is in the film industry and what do you think we can be doing to encourage it? It's incredibly important as it is everywhere and it's also, it represents a, like it is a symptom of, of a dysfunction across the whole society. It's socio-economic and to do with prejudice and to do with misogyny and, and patriarchy and all those things. There is a major problem, and, but that problem goes deeper than just the, the end, the visibly bad end results. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy in the way you see all these people that look, don't look like you and you think, well, maybe that's not for me. Or like, you know, if you're a young girl that, and you were interested in the film, you would notice for years that all the, say, say DOPs, directors of drug and camera people, you know, you would see you wouldn't see one woman, and and so you probably think, well, there's probably some reason for that. Maybe maybe subconsciously you think that, even if consciously you know that's not true. And probably 30 years ago, I would have said when I was absolute when I'm starting out, well, it's quite a macho department, the camera department, and you know, it might not, it might just be a natural thing that more men are interested in women. And that, I now know that to be complete nonsense, and I've just worked with a superb. Um, director of photography called Susie, uh, uh, Susie Lavelle from Ireland, who, who shot Normal People, um, uh, along with another, uh, another brilliant woman. And um, it's complete nonsense. And yet, it just becomes a kind of an accepted fact. And the only way you can change it is at every level, both having, having it become deeply unacceptable to have situations arise like Baptist and the Oscars, so that people really are force the question whether their choices when they're voting are influenced by those prejudices or not. But also, and, and almost more importantly, it's at the beginning, it's in education, it's in how we teach people about what kind of roles are appropriate for them. Um, it's about like, and the more role models there are that look like you, the more chance there is that you'll think, well, it could be me also. The film board is, on the board is, is, is large majority of women. And therefore, it can't be prejudiced that we aren't getting more uh, female-led films coming through. Which is complete nonsense, because it's about how many people apply. It's about a whole much earlier phase in the process of development where those problems arise. Um, and, I, and, they're, and they're structural. Uh, so, so yes, the long-winded answer. 
but it's, it's really important. Even today, I see I'm, I'm a young black woman and I'm the only person in my film class. And I would just like to ask for your advice for a person of color pursuing a career in the film industry where it does not recognize. Well, the people who run the Oscars, the Academy, are dreading every year. Dreading is all white, all male um, nominees. It's not like they're trying to keep anybody out. They are dying for it to become more diverse because they realize how awful it looks. So that's good. The problem is the membership is still largely old and largely white. So, but the good news is the membership is dying. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and the younger membership is more diverse. So I don't, I think this, like, I still think it's a really difficult time, but I think it's probably the best time there has been historically to be um, a young black woman uh, trying to make films. For example, you have somebody like Eva DuVernay, Eva DuVernay. Now, I know she's just one person, but that is a ma she's a massive success story, which I think helps a lot. My advice to you would be just to machine gun your way through. Just do the stuff you really want to do. Don't be discouraged. Uh, don't, and, and know that, um, that uh, there are lots of allies in the industry, as well as um, kind of dead structures that are kind of uh, uh, impediments. So I would say have hope, keep going, um, and I think things are improving. It's about like um, your experience about getting money, getting money to make movies and, and up, I mean I guess Room really opened doors for you, but I yes. guess prior to Room, how was that? And the Screen Ireland, which was the Irish Film Board, which particularly at development stage is very interested in bringing new talent through and, um, and they will then go to production finance and they can, they have sometimes schemes which will fully finance small films. So, uh, and there's also other, there's tax break here which is very effective. So between the tax break, a small sale to a TV channel and the film board, you can make a small film if you, get, if you have a good script and you've done some shorts and things like that. So actually there is a path to doing it for sure. The important thing is to, if you want to make films, is to start doing stuff and that can be at a very small self-produced level which people are so dying to see talent if the story is well told if there's something interesting in it if you believe the performances even if it's shot in your iphone people will go wow there's something there and you only need that little sort of look from from a producer or from a funder to be on the the conveyor belt which allows you to make a short that's funded, develop, you know, gives you some money to allow you to work on a script for something bigger and maybe allows you that first low budget film for which there aren't any real commercial expectations. People are happy if it plays festivals and it's well regarded by its audiences and by critics and that's enough to get you moving. So as long as the structures here remain as they are, I think it's not a bad time to to, you know, be starting. Well, thank you so much, Lenny, for coming in. Oh, it's such a pleasure. An honor. Um, so everyone